Hi, welcome to Ghostman Radio Station. My, my guests are sepsis. Who's going to tell me a little bit about how they came about? They recently won two, uh, another award twice, which is quite an achievement in any band's lifetime. They make some fantastic videos. And they've got a very cool look. Well, I think it's cool. They might say I'm just being old. But, hey, hi, um, can you introduce yourself to who I'm talking to band members today? Hi, my name is Melissa Wolf. I am the lead singer of Sepsis. And I am William. I'm like her. She's like Batman. I'm like Robin. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <Yes. laughs> well, how, how, did, how did you come up with the name Sepsis? Because it's a strange name to come up with, isn't it? Well, um, there's actually a disease, like a blood infection called Sepsis. So we kind of, we took that word. And we added an extra S on the end to make it a little bit more uniquely ours. So you guys could easily search us up on Google, make it a little bit more Google searchable. Um, we are the only sepsis you'll find with two S's at the end of the word. Um, and yeah, pretty much it just it makes things a little bit more simple. Now, how did you form your band? Because, I mean, did you form it in college or did you get meet each other in a... A musical outlook like a pub or a club and you just thought hi we like oh i like what you sing i like what you do that kind of thing so we actually first formed the band about 10 years ago when i had answered william's craigslist ad yes we are craigslist babies um and i had answered his ad um because i was in search of a band and he was looking for a band and we were just like okay cool let's try to form something so I met up with him in Manchester New Hampshire for my tryout and there was supposed to be another girl showing up that day she never showed up um, so thankfully I got the part yes awesome um, and he showed me some awesome riffs that he could do and stuff on the guitar and he was just like totally ripping it up and I was like oh my god you're amazing and uh, he really liked my voice at the time. He was like, okay, we got some work to do, but this this will work, you know? So I showed him some covers that I did at the time, like Evanescence-type style stuff. And I had a couple originals I had showed him as well. And then he sent me home with a couple of tracks, and I came back, like, the next week with some lyrics for those, and we just kind of started something. I imagine you've got quite heavy influences of uh, groups like Korn and places, bands like that. That's kind of that's kind of what we all grew up on, mostly. I mean, from traditional metal to new metal. Um, I come. I'm a little bit older than her, so I you know I come from more of a like a Pantera, Megadeth, or a traditional like, thrash metal era, the death metal era, um, where. Uh, Melissa kind of, she had the new metal thing going on, uh, metalcore, and just kind of both of our ideas over the years blending and, of course, like growing as individuals and, and with each other as musicians, kind of fine-tuning uh, the way that we see ourselves in the future has given us a, a clear path of, uh, you know, how to have fun with the music and, and to play the music and explore the music that we've always wanted to write. I imagine you put her going out live to perform, obviously, because you can get a better reaction with the crowd. How did you cope during the worst part of the pandemic when you couldn't go out live? So we actually started up a Twitch channel during COVID-19, during the quarantine. Um, we decided to, you know, start doing a lot of live streaming over on Twitch. Granted, we were live streaming beforehand on Facebook quite a bit. We were so good at doing um, it on Facebook that it just kind of made sense. We've always yeah. been kind of a technology band, a social media band. Uh, so when live technology came, uh, as it, when it was available as a tool for small businesses and entertainment, once you could go live um, as a band, it really, on all the platforms, it, it really became a, a unique part of Sepsis and the features of how we connect with fans. I mean, when you think about modern day musicians and what are the things and features that they can use in their toolbox to get ahead, this is something that came really natural to us. 
uh, we developed kind of a, like a make-believe or role-play talk show every Sunday night called Swarm TV on our Sepsis Facebook. And when we created the Twitch, we kind of expanded on that. Yeah, we stemmed off of that quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, and did games, giveaways, karaoke. The Twitch was the best way for us to communicate at this time, um, to stay in touch with the fans. We, Like you said, we did giveaways. Um, we started doing other things. We were branching out quite a bit other than just chatting. We also uh, ventured out into um, doing like karaoke and art and um, even cooking shows, you know, video games. Anything we don't do we a do. lot of acoustic performances, but we write a lot of music on acoustic guitar. So we actually started showing people some different sides of us, too. We did a Katy Perry song. Uh, we never do covers. It's something really that was really different for us. We, we did, even tried a Christmas song. We did a Christmas song. Um, we did Santa Baby by... Um, oh, it's my girl there. She, oh, forgive me. Eartha Kitt. Uh, Eartha Kitt uh, does Santa Baby. But, we, you know... So we started to just explore a different kind of music and, and, and genres, and of course, um, we had a couple of acoustic performances right at the beginning of um, the pandemic, and we just uploaded them and posted them and see how people would react to them. And some of them had like a quarter million views on, and people just really, you know, were ready to see different, you know, different sides of the band. And, and we made the most of it. You know, we made the most of going live. We were trapped in the house every day. Um, and I think it, it, it now it's really part of the weekly skill sets. You know, it's part of the it's part of our menu. Yeah, now we twitch every single night, every day. I mean, I think it's clever how you've done that because, as you said, you've taken complete advantage of the technology as it is, and and I like the way you've included your fans in that because you do put a lot of posting. You you encourage the fans to intermix with you. And I think that's a very good way for bands to act now. Because I, so I, I think if, if you look at the old bands, I, I won't mention their names, but some of them are up their own arses to be polite. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they don't involve the fans at all. And then they wonder why they lose their fanship as such. Well, that's, that's actually been like a really big part of Sepsis from the beginning. Is If, you know... And not, nothing against the A-listers. Or the, the, they had their own grind um, 20, 30, 40 years ago. It was a different grind, you know, from 8-tracks to cassettes or vinyl. And then, you know, musicians are encouraged heavily based on the way that music is presented, marketed, sold, and bought. So, you know, with Spotify and iTunes rewarding, um, you know, shorter songs and know commercial type songs and kind of you know basically rewarding um you know certain bands or certain acts for the lengths of their songs or the, the the organization of the material just the same way they did with vinyl you know when you when you had two sides of vinyl the songs could be longer so people recorded oh, yeah. longer music you know that's where you get the influence of you know prog music i mean you, you simply couldn't do that before because there was a minute or two of music give somebody five minutes to record it's going to really influence the way that musicians are recording um and in in the same way that the internet buying selling marketing communicating with customers and fans um you know we don't need a record deal we don't have to go through a record company or a publicist to get to our fans we don't have to go through our manager to talk with our fans we don't have to go through five or six entities to make that connection with fans. Fans can talk with us all day, 24 hours a day. And, and, and you know, <clears throat> the big bands, they don't have time for it. They don't, you know, they don't have time to sit and, and um, really get the feedback from their fan base. And, and you know, we've taken that um, and made it a luxury. And, and what I mean by that is we peer review all of our content. So between our Patreons and, like, our select VIP members, we audition a lot of our songs to the fans that already love us. We audition lyrics and videos before the public sees it. We audition and peer review a lot of our material to hundreds of thousands of people before it goes public. So, so like when we're building new songs, um, there'll be versions that 
that the fans can kind of help adjust and sculpt and give us feedback on. And that's something that you're never going to get in Metallica or Evanescence or that's only with modern day musicians. That's only with bands like Sepsis. And in today's world, you know, you go, what makes you different as a band? What makes you definably different? And it's, and it's that Sepsis doesn't, we don't have so much fans as people that are participating in the movement altogether. I like the way you do your videos. I've watched a couple on YouTube, like the ones that you've released. I like the way you've done them, like the old traditional style, like, you know, yeah. with, you, you know what I mean? Like the bands of old, like the, the original sort of, uh, the uh, the days of when uh, it was like Queen did their videos, you know, that yeah. kind of style. That's a big, that's, I mean, you know what, we're, we're hearing that um, compliment a lot. Um, and I've heard that compliment for some heavy hitters, and I'm really proud of that because we do all, you know, we uh, we do all of our own artwork, uh, stage plots. We do we do all of our own. Uh, we buy all of our cameras and drones. We have all, you know, no companies. We don't have any special people or fancy friends that come in and do this uh, for us. There's no record label or people that get us our fans or shoot our music videos. We we have all our own. Um, in-house staff, our own writers, our own printers, our own Thankfully manufacturers. Our, our team is very talented. Yeah, you know, um, every we build our own music video sets. We we do our own wardrobe. We have hairstylists and makeup that you know that are part of it. Um, technicians, grips, stagehands, and we have you know, and we utilize um, what we have. And, and we always wanted to be super authentic want to present ourselves in a way that you could say, oh, wow, I feel like I know these guys. You know, you're not going to see tons of camera shakes or magical tricks or computer-generated effects. We wanted people to see our faces. We wanted to make, we want to be able to look people in the eye and say that this is authentic rock and roll. You know, it feels like something we've done before, but something totally new. And, you know, because we really believe that that's the birthplace of um, of creativity. So for us, when we're shooting videos, it's great wardrobe. You know, it's good trying to find good lighting. Um, and naturally, you know, we have to be, you know, conscious of like our resources and our budget and our health and our time. But it was important uh, for us to continue on regardless of, you know, being void of fancy friendships or big bank accounts. We kind of looked at what we had all together, combined our skill sets and, uh, you know, if it takes us six months to buy a new camera, we all do it together, you know, and, and we should, you know, we get everybody, all of our friends out there, they hold lights and people cook and it's a nice experience, man. It's definitely a family orientated uh, kind of DIY band. Well, I, I definitely like the way Melissa does her, like the hair and, and all the, the sort of like the um, up, up front bit. It remind me a little bit of, I know this may seem strange, you might think this is strange, like a little bit of Susie Quattro. Have you heard of Susie Quattro? When she used to I do. Have the, not. But look I her up. Not. She's an old uh, British rock and roll star, but she was very much in your face. So, sort of like, the, in, like that presence, you know what I mean? When you go on a stage, you've got that presence. Thank you very much. Yeah, Melissa's very expressive. I think, you know, for us, we, we love shooting raw. Um, we don't do a lot of, like, color correction or, like, computer effects. We love shooting, you know, real eye color, skin color, hair color. We love to pull color. Something a lot color of bands don't and do. expression. Yeah, I was going to say an expression. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, being, you know, connecting in a, in a human way. And I appreciate that so much because we really try to shoot as raw and true as possible. And the same can be said uh, when you come and see us live. It's the same thing. We don't bring any computers on stage. I know that's a big thing with bands now. Uh, shout out to all those bands. I understand why it's done. But you know, for the Sepsis brand, we really wanted to be – that's why we're such a big band. That's why there's six of us. Uh, because we really wanted to be able to – when people hear the records, we want to be able to represent that in the most – it's natural, raw sound. Raw. Yeah. I was going to say that's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? If you do a studio, if you do a studio album, and then you've got to do it live, that's when you can tell how good a group really is. 
Because you we see, don't, we don't do like backtracks yeah. or anything like that. No, no, you know, no, um, no pitch control. We don't have any, you know, pitch control voice stuff or. The guitars don't tune themselves. I know that there's a lot of technology. We still tune our guitars. We still, every now and then, we sing a bad note. But 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 it really is. But it but it makes each um each experience raw, authentic. authentic. It keeps it real. So you know, so you come and see us. You go, man. I, I I know what they can do. I understand their ability. Um, they're the real thing. Um, that's what we're that's what we're selling here. Um, as sepsis is authenticity and the human connection and just like being a part of that that traditional love of rock and roll with without all the computer products and the the economics involved now how long does this sing, the song process take from lyrics to the actual finished product so william actually starts out writing on the acoustic guitar and he'll just start like putting the pieces together himself and he'll kind of like bring the song to me after that and we'll start figuring out like where the notes go you know how the song should be sung and uh we even had this one song called the swarm okay it was it started out as like an ice cream song so we were singing about ice cream right i didn't have any i didn't have any lyrics for it at the time so <laughs> Uh, but I, I I really wanted her to understand like what the melody was going to be. So I was talking about like that auditioning before. So, so know, we're, just, we were singing about Hagen Dazs right, for a while. Just, <laughs> right. So songs actually might stay in development for a, for a, what I would imagine a lot longer um, than maybe some other bands do. I'm really cautious about rushing material because um, I get excited uh, being a guitar guy. I get excited. Um, and I do, you know, I, I, most of the day I'm creating. Um, so I, as a result, I create a lot of stuff that just isn't a great fit for the band. It's a, you know, it's amazing stuff, but it, it's not, it's not a great fit, uh, for sepsis. And sepsis is definitely music that is cognitive and purposeful when you write it. It sounds a certain way. There's, there's rules to it. There's some things you can and can't do, um, you know, to try to encourage it. Uh, to remain in its integrity. Um, so some some stuff as a result uh, can take a little bit longer. Uh, I'm we're, we're working on album two now, um, and we've released a couple singles that um, don't belong on the album uh, and aren't naturally weren't released with our first album. Uh, so the reason why those singles are being released, you know, now is because they, you know, I just couldn't fit them into the scope of the second album. But they're still great tunes, you know, and... Uh, I'm Shout really, out to Glenn Robinson. Yeah, I'm really he's, cautious. He's our engineer. Um, he's coming back for album two as well, and he helped master the, the singles that were just released. Yeah, Glenn well. Robinson, um, he's a um, producer, engineer. He's worked on, like, Voivid, Jason Newstead, Queensryche, Annihilator, Voivid... Or Gore, a couple others, but that's that's who we that's who we work with. So usually, uh, it all starts on the acoustic. It's got to be a song first. Most of our music has to be transcribable to melodic music or lullabies. Uh, you know, I'll get it sounding like a song first before it becomes metal. Um, and then once it once it becomes a song, uh, we'll kind of graduate it. Uh, we'll start writing lyrics to it, putting the notes together. Turning up the distortion. And kinda. then we usually bring it to the rest of the band and we have them learn it. Yeah, we'll bring it to the band room for a couple months and see it, see if they can play it well. Mm -hmm. um, if, it, if, you know, if it physically plays well, um, then we'll, we'll go to the last stages of recording. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll send it off, get with Glenn, and then we, we usually do the mastering. So... You know, a song can take anywhere from like a month to like six months sometimes. And I know that, that sounds like a long time, but like when you have really important parts to great music um, and you're just, you don't have the experience or the living yet, uh, sometimes it takes a little more living to, to write the rest of the parts. Uh, and if, like we have songs now that are just now being finished because of all the experiences that we had to go through in the last year really helped finish those songs. Yeah. Who is your biggest music influences? Obviously you have certain influences, but is it like an artist you would really like to work with, alive or dead? So, 
So, okay, one of, one of my biggest influences ever is Michael Jackson. I absolutely love Michael Jackson. And, and he's passed away, um, too. And I would yeah. go with Ronnie James Dio mm -hmm. because he lived in my town. And it's, like, one of the first, like, metal vocalists that I was... Dio's a heavy second for me. You know, if you're going <laughs> to sure. work with somebody, yeah. like, to do anything, I mean, yeah. if, you know, if Dio came over and had, you know, Coca-Cola with me, I'd be happy. And as you said, because you've got the band uh, set up, do you have the odd the, um, argument, just to be polite, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you cut off a bit. Sorry, there. do you have the odd argument now and again, you know, like disagreements? Or is it quite amicable most of the time? Oh, oh, no, no, we fight. No, we do. He <laughs> has a band, sure. Yeah, no, we fight. I mean, there's a lot of us. And, um, and there's a lot of staff, too. Um, and we're all, we're all boys and girls, and some of us are different colors and different shapes and different ages with different opinions and we all come right we all come from different kind of walks of life sure we get we we get and you know what we don't fight a lot as much as we get confused and i think with when when we get confused and, and it's really funny because everybody here is like a different level of musician too yeah for sure anyway it helps like it helps having younger people and older people experienced people and unexperienced people then you get all those different right. If you aspects. get too many, if you get too many chiefs and not enough Indians, right? That's exactly. when it gets dangerous. I don't know. We fight though. We do. People get mad at each other a lot. How did it feel to win the award the second time? I imagine it was great the first time. I mean, because it's always right to win an award the first time. But the second time, I think it's a lot harder. I could not believe it, to be honest with you. I was so excited. I was absolutely stoked. Um, honestly, the, this award this time around, the first time, sure, that could be for sepsis, but I feel like this award was really for the Swarmies, yeah, which is people, what we, we call our fans. Those bands that we were <laughs> up against, I mean, if, it, it's tough not knowing, but in, in, in New England, it's a very competitive uh, High quality rock. Our roll. fans fought for that they, one. They, they, they yeah. Really, they honestly, I don't know how we really did it because the competition was crazy. Um, and they're all such super talented. There was no slouches um, for our area. Um, and I don't know, man. Like the first time, I was really nervous. Because I'd never yeah. know. I'd we didn't not, know what we were doing. I didn't know what anything, I was doing. No. It's just this, this whole red carpet experience. Whole different experience for we, us. For us, we fought, you know, for the last 10 years for people to take us serious. And then for somebody to nominate us for something, it was really kind of nerve wracking. Yeah. But the second time around, um, the, I, I just, I can't believe the hundreds of thousands of fans. They just, I'm honestly that just came out and verbalized people that expressed people that publicly, um, we're, we're not done. It's been 70 hours and I, and still the, the phones are ringing off the hook, you know, the congratulations. And, the, and I just, I, I just, if there's one thing I could really take from that, um, is that I've never felt such an amount of, of gratitude in, 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 being humble uh, to some of our co-nominees, uh, bands like 16 by 20, um, who sat with us at the award ceremony. Oh, yeah. And when we when we won, I mean, those guys are just such fucking role models, man. Like, excuse my language, but they are just crazy role models. The way they dealt with it, the way the, the, the scene here in, in New England has gotten healthier throughout the years because of bands like that. Um, and the, 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 the love and the, I want to say the, the generosity, um, from the bands that, um, just gave us the best wishes, man. I, so I've never been, I've never been so thankful for a piece of plastic because it's, a, better myself. because <laughs> it's, it's, a, because it's yeah. a symbol you know, we didn't get into this stuff for, 
for money or anything, Mark. You know what I mean? Like, we knew there wasn't a lot of money in rock and roll. We didn't, we never expected to be, you know, like, disturbed or anything. We don't, we're not, our goal is not to be, like, A-listers or anything. We don't have, like, a lot of expectations regarding that. We just set goals for the band, and then we head into it. You know, we try to see us as a band, as a family, like, what kind of things are going to keep us loving music and keep us playing music for the year, and we go for that. Um, and we go really hard on it, um, whether we think that's a handful of videos or doing a national tour. You know, we try to see what we want and what our fans want as a community, as a family. We ask the fans what they're looking for, and we try to deliver. Um, but we never expected to be two-time reigning champs out here. New England's a big area. You know, it's not like your neighborhood or your hometown or your state. I mean, it's a massive area of super competitive musicians. I mean, everybody in there look great. I mean, it's not like just one state. Or God, I mean, you know? I mean, it's it's very. I, I tell you what, it's if you've never won anything before, it's awfully for me. It was kind of it was like scary. Yeah. Would, would you ever consider coming over to the UK if anybody offered you to go and do a like a gig over here? Oh my gosh, I would love more than anything to visit you guys. That's something I think Melissa's always wanted to do. Oh, she's, absolutely. She's always said that from mm-hmm. the beginning. I would love, naturally, I would love to. You know, I would yeah, love to. I, I want to see what it's like out I there. hear as a rumor that, that, we always hear over here that it is rumored that people would be more excited about us there. I don't yeah, like hearing that. I would that. love to find like, out. It, that's good news <laughs> and bad news. <laughs> right, I would love to find out. I think out. you could come, you'd come over quite good because you're quite honest of the way you approach your music and you, you're very open how you do things and the people appreciate that more than you realise because, as I said before, you come across a lot yeah, of close shots. we don't shop. know that. We don't know that people <laughs> like that or not. Like, we're just, you know, we're trying to offer something new. You know, when I was growing up, all the rockers, all the rappers, everybody was untouchable. You know, everybody was gangster. Everybody was a pimp. Everybody was a rock star. Well, now, because of the internet, you know, there really, there's only, you know, however many handful of big rock stars left. And, you know, we didn't set out to that, to do that. And, 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 you know, if we can reach a few people and people get the message and people are having fun, um, that's, that's, we really, you know, really reached our goal we write about anything and nothing we don't you know we don't have a uh, we don't have any political views we don't play for any teams we're not against anybody we don't care what you identify i know that's all a big deal now but we don't we're super transparent we're just a rock and roll band we just like playing music we like writing cool poems and melodies and singing them for you and you know, what you get out of it is your story, you know. What, no specifics. Right, this, we try to write the music so it belongs to everybody a little bit differently, you know. So rega- and with, with each song, you actually, you do get a different experience with every song. We try, There's yeah, we try, to keep, we try to keep the menu fresh, change keys in the music, try some different beats, put ourselves in, you know, give ourselves some obstacles and challenges along the way. And, and, but you know the main thing is is continuing to have fun. But when we but we, you know we never know if other people are having fun if we don't ask. You know so we do right. ask. What's your most personal song? Because I'll tell you one of mine if you tell one your one of yours. What's the song that's most personal to you? You already know. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, I mean, this is a. It, I know this is a <laughs> tough decision, but for, I'll say mine first, and then she'll tell you why. I'm going to say you already know. But it's not a great. It's not a great example of like a. Fa- I don't want to say that's not favorite. That doesn't mean that that's my taste because you know my taste might change from day to day, just like bands or genres of music. You know, when we're going to heavy metal shows, very rarely are we, are we going to listen to heavy metal bands. We'll listen to ska bands. We'll listen to jazz. We'll listen to rap. We'll listen to dance music on our way to a heavy metal show because we're going to listen to nine hours of metal. You know, so it kind of it keeps your ears fresh. Um. I think that music fits the moment, um, and right now, you already know, still is resonating with me because it's really a, a song about kind of taking a breath and, 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 and letting go of limitations and barriers and symbolism and you know skin colors and, and 
you know, it, it kind of is an ode. It's a tip. It, we're kind of like the United Nations of rock and roll in the song. We're just, you know, we're just saying, you know, we're just trying to, you know, keep everybody talking and keep everybody, keep the conversations off the table um, without the... Have without, everybody separate their differences for a moment and just come together and unite as one. You, you know what I mean? Just, you know, for, for any reason, for music, for the sake of humanity, anything, whatever you can find the positivity in the loving your neighbor and give us somebody a chance. It's a really a, a positive healing song. And, and it's not it's not a song that we we're never going to come out with a song that sounds like that ever again. So um, it, it feels good to 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 start it and finish it. And since he took the one I was going to say, <laughs> I'll go with uh, push because that one was really heavy for me. It was all about the struggle we had with our music career and how we had to fight so hard to get where we're at today. Yeah, and that song, that's, it's funny now looking at it, because that song was written before we had a record deal, before we had, a, you know, we won the award last time, before we did all that. It was a very, it's also our, our fastest written song. It was written overnight, mm -hmm. and I, we had it to Glenn by, like, the end of the week. It was yeah. gone. <laughs> um, but it was a passionate song. I was really scared, actually, about letting it go that fast because I thought, you know, maybe I was just excited. But I said, you know, I, I got to have just one song that is just reckless and impulsive and just youthful. You know, you know, uh, we're growing up now. So, you know, I wanted that last little let's, you know, I don't give a F kind of approach and let's just feel it out. Let's just let the song bang and clang around and just be an organic rock group, you know. And uh, that was a quickly written song. But it was written in a time, anyways, I'm sorry. But it was written in a time that um, we were really being ignored. Yeah, I mean, we were literally walking around, knocking on people's doors, not getting any answers. and uh, Nobody would play us. You know, we, we just decided to push forward Nobody anyway. Nobody would book that's, us. That's the name Push, because we're pushing ourselves forward. We, we didn't care. We didn't give up. We kept going. Well, mine was because I was in a coma. Right, and it's but and because I was in that coma, I believed I saw or heard a god in angel waking me up anyway. So I wrote a song called "Not My Time in Heaven," and um, I was lucky to uh, that I, one of the bands I interviewed was, let me use a little sample of their music. I asked them first, obviously. I, I don't do that without permission, and it uh, and it, was, it worked quite well with that little track that they gave let me use. And it was very kind of him. I said to him, it's very kind, because, I mean, I know magicians' work is their, it's their babies, and I would never do that without permission. It's it's like taking a baby away from from, from your cot or something. Oh, that's my baby. I, I don't want you to think of me myself. <laughs> would you ever do collab, co collab songs with someone if they asked, or would you not do that? Would. Would. Is it would we do a would collab? Would or, or would now? <laughs> would we do a collab? I mean, I suppose it would have to fit. It would definitely have to fit well with the music. Yeah, we we certainly aren't one of those bands that are... I know that's the thing now. We are not excited about working with anybody. Because at this very moment, we are very much excited about continuing to grow ourselves. So it's like we have so many ideas. We're full of creativity right now. And that it would be such a distraction um, to go, you know, play a song with Aerosmith, you know. I, would, you know I, I mean, it's all nice and all of that. We all come from stagehand backgrounds. So we used to build stages for Motley Crue, Disney on Ice, Ariana Grande. So, you know, so we've had our fair share of star-studded moments. Um. I, like Melissa said, I think it would have to be a really good fit. It would have to make sense. I know I, I know Melissa has more to do with it than, than I do. I feel like that would be more like a front person thing. People would want to probably see you sing with somebody, maybe. Um, it would have to be, like, fan-driven. That would make sense to me. Yeah, that would be a good thing to ask them. Who would, you, who would they see Melissa look? You know what I think would be cool? Another, another female. Yeah. 
I, th- you know, I, th- I, you know, I think that'd be kind of cool. Like Melissa and another female, even if the other female took lead, or Melissa took lead, or they went back and forth, or however it works, or maybe like you did a little chorus piece, like that'd be cool. I think people think like a collab, and they think like you gotta write it together and right. like, piece it together. I don't think that's necessary. Like if we had some, if we had a, if we had you know Danny Warsnop come over and sing a song with Substance, that would be interesting. For sure. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'm just saying, I'm just saying in terms of hearing, do you, I mean, like, let's say you did a feature, right? And you did a feature with, um, oh, for God's sakes. If you did a feature with Roses Unread, you would have to sing over their band's music. That would be different for you. That would be very different for me. They write really, yeah. di- we, we write. <laughs> for sure, that would be different. You know, we write really different. It's been a long time since Melissa's really, except for karaoke, all she sings is substance. <laughs> I think it's very, it's very hard for people to realise the dynamic of the singer on the on the stage because obviously when you're hearing outside and on in the audience, you're not hearing the same as you are on stage because obviously you have to have um, plugs in sometimes because it's you can't hear your voice otherwise. Yeah, some and singers have. Our monitors are very different from the, the yeah. speakers. Of right, and if we don't got like some some sound guys, like if you have a modern system, they can kind of. I can say, give me a lot of Melissa and a little bit of the drummer. Oh yeah, if you have like in ear monitors or something. Yeah, you can then, kind of yeah, can sculpt definitely. it out. But uh, I mean, she. Some of the clubs we go to, man, we're lucky that they have ex. You know. Luckily, they can plug the At shit this in. moment in time, we don't have any in ear monitors. I would we love really some. Should. I would love some, but I can't afford it right now. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> We're just uh, little musicians. Well, I, mean, I think you're doing okay. In my p- humble opinion, I mean, I I've been around <laughs> since the days of the days of punk rock when it was uh, thriving in England in the seventies and stuff like that. I mean, I remember that. I mean, I think. I know punk rock originated in USA. I do know that. You know. But I think the UK version was a bit more in your face, in my humble yeah. opinion. Yeah. Oh, you guys had the darkness. Yeah, they got lots of metal out there, too. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm always hearing. I'm always hearing people go crazy and get yeah, excited. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've got a friend from England. He's like, you guys all stand around in the audience. All the time. Because when I go to American shows, everybody stands around on their phones. I think when you go into, I think when you go into concerts from here on out, there should be like a no phone thing. Yeah. You have to watch well, it. It, 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 awesome. it's because I went to a Motorhead concert no ye- years ago, and they had to, they, 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 they did sort of like a joke, because like, it was described as the loudest band at the, at the time. Um, the, they said, oh, we've been turn- told by the management we've got to turn down the bass. And they just deliberately went, turned it up to like as high as they possibly could get a little away with, you know, without losing that, <laughs> losing that um, energy. And I think they were supported by a group called Sword, but I don't know if they're still going. I think they're called, ca- yeah, Canadian band. Yeah, yeah fuck with them. Yeah, that's what, no, I know what it is. That's they like don't. they love that name. I love them, man. Now I'm about to look them up. <laughs> yeah, they're, like a, they're like a, they're almost like a, like a, like a newer, like, like Sabbathy kind of thing going on. Really? Yeah, yeah I was going to say that. They're very much like that, yeah. Yeah, I like that's really good shit. Good, good, good guitar tone. You'd like it. I probably would. Like your dad would like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I could, I could definitely see that. Well, uh, please tell people where they can find, where to find you. I know you're on Facebook, but. Tell everybody their bits and pieces where they can find your band. We're, we're, dis- we're we disgusting. Are dis- yeah, we are literally we're all disgusting. over the planet. We are on all social medias everywhere, including Facebook. Um, we got iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, Twitter, Snapper, Google Pop. And, uh, of course, our website is probably the best place to find us. So if you go to sepsis.com, spelled S-E-P-S-I-S-S dot com, then you will find us there. You'll find all information on 
future tours and shows, and uh, you can, of course, buy merch there. We've got a little shop. You know what, what, what I was going to do when I put this on my podcast, when I do it on my blog post, I'll share one of your videos on on the post as well. I would put some music on the podcast, but YouTube get very funny about music. Whether you own it or not, they, they just say, Oh, sorry, you have not got permission to have power to do this. Go away. <laughs> Well, I'd like to thank you both for coming on the show today. It's very kind of you. And I always do the following to all guests I have on the show. What, Melissa and William, what is your unique sign-off? Our unique what? I'm sorry? Unique sign-off. How you would like to say goodbye. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, thank you guys for listening to this interview. Um, Hopefully we've got... You know, some future shows coming up for you right now. Some things are kind of up in the air. But uh, we definitely want to get back out on the road as soon as possible. Um, we hope to, you know, release our next album by the end of 2020. What she really wants to say is if you're in the U.K., make sure you go follow and like and track all of our social crap so we can convince the robots in the government robot killing machines and all the powers that be that we want to play, <laughs> Melissa wants to play in the United Kingdom, but she needs your help to prove to all the algorithm silly machines that Robots. we're important. <laughs> well, there's Please that. play the music because it doesn't cost any money. Check don't, out our merch store. Don't forget to sign our guest book. Please, that, that can be found on the front page of our website. Come it check out the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash sepsis bid. And remember, you can play with us on the Xbox Live social network at immaculategaming.com. Yes, we also have a, a little gaming community on the Xbox called Immaculate Connection Gaming. We play a lot of Halo 5 and a few other games, so if you're interested, hit us up. Well, the days of my gaming, are, 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 I'm that old, I remember arcade games when I used to work down the arcade and played in the arcade game. Beyond that, it's beyond my limit. because I love arcades. I wish there were more around Yeah, I here. wish there were more. <laughs> I wish there were more arcades. I want to do, yeah, I want to do a, like a, I want to do a music video in like a retro arcade. That'd be awesome. Just, that's it, that's it. That no no really backdrop, cool. nothing, just a whole school Yeah, we retro. need a big one now, like a really big one. A big one. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we can put drums in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm going to do now, Melissa and William, is I'm going to do my unique sign-off for you. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Tonight, I talked to Melissa and William of Sepsis fame. They have their swarming swarm around in their brain. They like to make things on the video and chat. You can watch about listen out on Twitch and all that. Social media is not is a bit foreign to me, but I'm getting there, you see. I recommend this band to anyone to listen to. They've got the cool look. They've got the hair. They've got the, the six members all there. They've got the songs. They've got the, the, the vibe. So go and listen to them. And don't forget to, ha- to join their hive. Oh, that's awesome. That was so <laughs> Thank cool. You, Thank you. 